Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to After Buzz TV. We have a very special spotlight on for you today. I'm one of your hosts, JJ Jurgens, and I'm joined here tonight by... Hey everybody, I'm Dario Kristen. And get ready, we have three very special guests from <laughs> The <laughs> Young and the Restless. Thank you. Hey guys. Hi, I'm Greg Rickhart. I'm Gina Tonioni. And I'm Brighton James. Yay, thanks so much for coming, guys. We're excited to have you. Thank you, Thank you for yes. having us. Yeah. So you guys have a huge week coming up. Lots yeah. of stuff going on. Uh, one of the feature storylines <laughs> is Danger in Disguise, which involves you two, and you're yeah. still out there searching I'm for your wife, right? <laughs> 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 Let's go ahead and talk a little about what the fans can expect coming up here in this oh, exciting week. Dangerous in Disguise. October is an amazing month for YNR. We put together an amazing show. I think they're going to be very excited. It starts the 30th. The show is incredibly dramatic driven by event um, excitement. There, something happens within the building at mm -hmm. Newman Towers. I can't give that away, but uh, we are all in disguise. The costumes are amazing. The art department, the design department did an incredible job. It is sure to not disappoint. <laughs> that is what I can tell you. <laughs> Any, anybody Absolutely. else? Well, yeah, uh, for me. I mean, <laughs> Were you at the party? I wasn't at the party because I was too busy looking for my wife. Yes. And now... Um, <laughs> who's missing? Who's missing, but she has escaped her, the person who, mm -hmm. you know, kidnapped her. And... Uh, I'm and still I'm still trying her. to find you her. You can't give away any story. I can't give away anything. <laughs> yeah. But but at least you know the, the, we know that she's alive and mm -hmm. uh, the 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 reuniting will happen soon. And she no. went missing on your honeymoon. I mean, she what did. a bummer of a honeymoon, huh? right? Tell me about <laughs> it. You'll, you'll remember that forever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We went on a helicopter ride. I got sick and then woke up and she's gone. <laughs> It was a great yeah. wedding, though. I was there. It was <laughs> yeah. a really nice wedding. I, I wasn't invited. You weren't invited? <laughs> I don't know why. Where were you? What was uh, happening? I was around. I think uh, Devon just decided Kevin shouldn't be there. Kevin's always there. Phyllis <laughs> <laughs> was responsible. And then, and then he comes. Who does he come running to, asking for help to find the you. wife that goes yeah, missing? Yeah, that's Me. True. You. That is huh. true. And now a lot of people come running to you. Yeah, for that's help, true. Yeah, the that's skills. True. Yeah. I mean, talk about how you have to use your abilities. Well, I think uh, <laughs> Kevin's sort of become like everybody's go-to guy if they need a computer hacked or if they need uh, <laughs> to find a you hacker. know to yeah to find a hacker, which is um, uh, a really fun position to be in on the show it's just so funny to me because in life i'm so <laughs> computer illiterate <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, the way it that like i remember peter came up to me once he's like hey i'm having a problem with my computer do you mind like if you coming up and, and taking a look at it i was like uh, okay uh, <laughs> like, i'm not kevin but all right <laughs> I play it on TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um How funny. so yeah and then i'm at the party too but i get sort of whisked away very quickly to um right. to be on uh uh Alert. Child, uh, what a child <laughs> care duty. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, so Kevin and Mariah are sort of looking after the kids. Right. We sort of escort them to safety before things get really dangerous, and then um, and heated. And no pun intended, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then uh, <clears throat> so I'm there, but not in peril like some other people. Mm -hmm. And then in this scene, you know, usually you have one on ones with a lot of the actors, but this one, there's like an uh, assortment of ensemble right. of the actors. That's right. What's it like to work with the entire group on set like that? I always look forward to those days. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, because you get to catch up with everybody in between takes, yeah. and you know, everybody generally has their phones on silent and they're checking emails or whatever it is. And then when it comes time to do the work um, <laughs> you know y it's fun to sort of interact with one another and share a story you're right it's usually if Jack and I will work together for weeks and weeks and then you know you see maybe one or two <coughs> other characters but when you have like a ballroom scene or something that we did in October for instance it's great you, you catch up and you start to realize gosh I wish I was working with that one <laughs> a little bit more yeah. Yeah. wow I've never worked with you yeah. know we've never yeah. actually worked very much at all and I was just saying today boy I hope we yeah. get to yeah there's a lot yeah. of that happening right now a lot of yeah. like cross-pollinating yeah. oh look <laughs> 
I brought it back to the oh, fire. Nice. 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 Cross pollinating on the show. Um, yeah, so that's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Those are always long days, though. They are long, long days. Long that's days. the thing. I also find that like we all get into this collective rhythm where it's like yeah. we all get slap happy at the same time. Oh, we yeah, all get the giggles, sure. <laughs> and then after lunch, we're all a little like tired at the same time, sort of like wondering like Candy how much longer we have. Yeah, yeah. So it's this. It's a fun. You had also. Oh, sorry, Jenny. I was going to say, do we want to show them real quick before we oh. dive in? We have a no, little please. special exclusive sneak cool. peek of the trailer for you guys so you can see the event that they're talking about here. So I go see. ahead and roll, watch that. <clears throat> this week. Somebody help me! Dangerous lurking. The building is on fire. Lying its prey. My family's still up there. And no one. I'm so scared. Chelsea! Is safe. I'm not leaving without you. And we both die here. Look out! Less dangerous disguise. Wow. Exciting. Mm. That looks Big fantastic. Stuff. That looks really it's cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, the production value was just. I have been doing this for over 20 years in daytime and started when I was young um, and been on other shows. And I got to tell you, this just took my breath away. Yeah. What mm. I saw and what they did in just a short amount of time. Stunts are beautiful. The pyrotechnics are beautiful. Mm -hmm. and the story is great. So I'm, I'm really hoping the fans respond because we were really excited to see it. Yeah, and the costumes too. I know you said yes. that earlier. Yeah. The costumes yeah. were very elaborate. Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. 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 Makeup, wardrobe, they all did a great they job. They just knocked it out of the yeah. park. And then, Greg, you had mentioned that um, sometimes people on set ask you to do certain things with your computer because <laughs> right, right. they think that you really have the skill to do that. Do fans do the same thing? Do they mistake you guys for your characters when you see them in person? Or they're, are they <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I, I was in a uh, Atlanta airport recently and I was washing my hands and this gal, I could tell, watched the show. She was looking at me in the mirror and as I walked away, she said, Phyllis, I love you. I want you to go kill somebody. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> kill them. And it's funny, they really think that you are this person who will like crush <clears throat> people. Yeah. You know, end their life, or whatever. and they, they yeah, yeah. They, they really don't know you, yeah. so they think that you are your character. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of playing Phyllis, you've been in the role now for yeah. a little over a year and really made it your own. Like, what choices have you made for that, or how's that experience been for you? You know, it, 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 some days really good, and some <laughs> other days like I don't know if I'm even hitting the mark. But um, yeah, for the most, you're hitting the mark. <laughs> 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 Thank you. That means a lot. Um, but yeah, you just make it your own, and you can't. I couldn't do uh, what Michelle did. I, I could have my interpretation of what she did or what made it work, so to speak. And uh, I just try to do that every day. Just bring my best, bring it, bring the edge that I need to, and dig because that really isn't a big part of me. I'm a lot more soft spoken actually. Mm -hmm. So I love Phyllis. I love what it makes me do. You know, makes me go to a place that maybe isn't comfortable. <coughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's what I like. Doing a great job. Thank you. And how's it working with Peter Bergman? <clears throat> love, 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 love. He is such a pro. He's just, he, he was an instant friend to me. Um, when I got to the show, I still had to meet new people, and I felt like a kid in the cafeteria. So, you know, it never changes. You have to make friends and connect with people, and you want to with this group. They're a great group of people. He was just my friend right away yeah. and gave me an insight on Phyllis that, you know, I don't know if I could get by the reading or, you know, even looking at my script. He could say things that say, this, this is what she is and just remember this. And so he's helped me quite a bit. Well, you guys have great chemistry on the show. Yeah, so it's not it. hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not hard. Now, Brighton, you've had a little bit of dissension with your father kind of on the show. Now, yeah. with Hillary being on the loose, I know we can't give anything away, but <laughs> do you think Neil's ever going to get what's coming to him? Or <laughs> well, it's a soap opera, so I'm sure <laughs> eventually he's going to get something. Um, yeah, it's very interesting, the relationship with uh, Devon and Neil, because, you know, th they're not blood. And, you know, he, I, Neil met Devon when he was 16, 17 years old. So, you know, he was, was a young man, you know, becoming an adult. And, you know, to have a woman be the first thing to really put them at odds. And then, you know, I mean, as the audience knows, Neil is behind, you know, Mm -hmm. Her being her disappearance and everything, and I think you know if and 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 when it does, you know, come to a head, and Devon finds out, it's going to be very interesting to see how their uh, their bond is affected because it's you know that's not blood. It's you know mm -hmm. these are two just grown men who have been a huge part of each other's lives, mm -hmm. but a uh, very important thing is about to. Get in between them. Get in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something oh. major. Yeah. And then you play this billionaire, you know, who's <coughs> obviously married. How has learning relationships on the show affected you in your real life? Like, what have you learned about yourself from playing this character? 
what have I learned about myself? From that you have playing? a lot less money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because, I mean, you know, I only became a billionaire on the show maybe two, three years ago now. And so at the heart of who Devon really is, is someone who is from the streets. You know, he's not used to having that. Even though if I seem like I'm used to it on the show, it's, it's, it's always an act. He's, yeah. he's used to putting on an act, you know, for people and hiding his real feelings mm. and being, mm. you know, not letting himself be vulnerable. Um, so if anything, it's taught me about myself that how, how lucky I really am to not have to be like that and have to have a show in real life. Um, and it really shows the, yeah, the, the juxtaposition, the, the difference, the, main, the big difference in, in our two um, lives is really what stands out the most, I think. Now you've kind yeah. of, because you started out at a really young age, just a little Richie. Yeah. And yeah. I was looking back at <laughs> clips, and so yeah. Naya Rivera was always hitting on you, yeah, right? Yeah, so she, she was my girlfriend for a while yeah. on the show. Yeah. So you had this aggressive girl at a young age, then you kind of got to play the billionaire like playboy, right. now you're a married man, like... <laughs> Which one do you most yeah. relate to? That's funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, no I was this is a great three, question. four when Naya was was. Uh, <laughs> she had game though. She was yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had game. She, she, did. she really did. Um, Cupcakes and all kinds. Of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I mean, in my personal life, I'm, I'm not one to be out and play the field a lot and you know go from relationship to relationship to relationship so i think the when devon was going through that <laughs> stage from like model to model um when he was trying to to ignore his feelings for hillary that that was far away from who i am but so i don't relate with that i think the uh, where he's at now is is more so where i can connect to yeah yeah mm -hmm. finding that one special someone and yeah. then you also have a strong musical mm. background. You work with mm. Michael Jackson. I mm. mean, uh, the list goes on and on. I know you've had a single out. Is music in the future f more for you, do you think? Um, I'll never say no. Not not in any foreseeable future. I don't have any plans for that right now. It's it's really difficult to do anything as, yeah. on, uh, you know, it's while doing the soap. Schedule, yeah. um, and especially the way I'd want to do music if I could, you know, and perform and, and be on the road. and. Um, and write and be in the studio. There's just it's a lot that would go into it. And I want to. I would want to dedicate my time completely towards it. So as of right now, no. But I, I, I all, I'm always singing. I always yeah. sing myself. I always. I mean, I love music. Music was my first love, mm -hmm. even before acting. Um, so perhaps one day yeah. I'd love I think to. Maybe you could love talk to, to Nick and get a little gig at the Underground. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I could. Nice. Maybe I could buy the Underground. <laughs> 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 That's true. You don't need to talk to him. <laughs> So now, um, Greg, you <laughs> no. just had uh, Chloe was back, who yeah. was, everybody was excited about because yeah, you guys had too. such a yeah talk, yeah. talk about how that was that reunion. Um, <clears throat> it was great. Uh, Liz is just such a <laughs> trooper, and she's uh, so great to work with. So it was great having Chloe back, and also dynamic wise, I think um, that's <clears throat> probably been it's. I think it's been the most substantial uh, romantic relationship that Kevin's been involved in, and her leaving was really you know took a toll on him, and so. Um, getting to play her coming back and just what that sort of like how that muddies up the waters for Kevin was really fun and um, yeah so it was uh, it was great. Mm. How do you think he felt or how'd you feel this character when she kind of wasn't as I mean she had a little wall there yeah. you know and was hiding things from him. And I think you know I mean it was painful it was really and my heart like reading it my heart was breaking for Kevin because mm -hmm. you know he's just been so uh, willing to be vulnerable and willing to give her mm -hmm. so much and um, to get you know to get the and that's not and I think it's it was heartbreaking but also familiar because I think that's not the first time that she's mm -hmm. done that to him she's often had walls up <coughs> and um, so you know it's that sort of like oh it, it's painful but it's also familiar and so yeah it was it was fun to play because I think he's been sort of um, a little happier these days so mm -hmm. I was whenever he gets too happy I don't <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get nervous yeah. Yeah. do you ever want to see him go back to being more oh sure yeah, yeah. I, what, what's fun about I always think what's great about um, Kevin is like he really walks the line pretty carefully like yeah. when he's good he's not really good and when he's bad mm -hmm. there is a vulnerability and sort of an explanation for why he might be misbehaving so it's always fun straddling that line and um, yeah if I find myself going too far in one direction it's fun to go back the other way. And you just celebrated 13 years on the show, right? You just started my 13th yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Luck, lucky go back quickly. Yeah. And we've seen you grow so much. So what's it been like to experience that for 13 years on the um, show? Gosh. Uh, I mean, it's been the greatest job in the world. Yeah. I always say I'm the luckiest guy. Yeah. Um, 
and and just fantastic in that you know unlike other roles that actors were freelance we work freelance and you get to do a role for a <coughs> month or two or a year but this is like you know he's really like such a part of like yeah. I mean, we're different in so many ways, but who he is is such a part of mm -hmm. of my life because uh, we've been together for 13 years, you know? It's, uh, minus my family, it's the longest <laughs> <laughs> I've ever had. So, it's yeah, so it's, um, it's I'm, I'm grateful every single day. Yeah. yeah. Now, YNR does have such history. I mean, number one mm -hmm. for 26 years, you guys are on your 43rd season. I mean, how does it feel being involved with a show like that? I, you know, and I mentioned before, I've been on other soaps, um, One <coughs> Life to Live and Guiding Light, and those were long celebrated soaps as well. Um, one of the things that I can say right off the bat, the sense of family there is real. The people are lovely. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's fun going to work. I whistle every day to work. Um, <laughs> there, I yeah. really do, and yeah, I'm not true. just saying that. It's rare. Uh, it's rare. You don't get that everywhere. Um, you know, and it, there's this sense of force that when we do a show like this, people know about it. Mm -hmm. And it is top notch. Yeah. It's no joke. They don't mess around. Our PR is amazing. Pa Maddie K. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's <laughs> tweeting right man. now. <laughs> amazing man, Jimmy Freeman. We just have yeah. a great group. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's a, a privilege. It's a privilege mm -hmm. to be a part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. And then reality TV has taken over so many networks. Yes. But and even some soap operas have not made the rating cut, we'll mm -hmm. say. But YNR has and people yeah. still yeah. are fanatics over it. Fanatics. What do you think it is that the fans just cannot get enough of the show? I don't know. I was just <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean we have over five million viewers. <coughs> um, mm -hmm. so a day and I was just saying to Eric, we were talking about a scene and we said, Oh gosh, I, this is really out there. Okay, we're gonna, you know, put everything we got into this. I said, But you know what? They love it. They yeah. love it, and they love it when we love it, and that's important. Um, what do I think it is? I just think they love their characters. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think mm -hmm. they're still just go along with whatever stories <laughs> happening. <laughs> you know, for better or for worse, they love their characters. Yeah. They rally. Mm -hmm. They rally behind the show. It's yeah. such a loyal audience. Loyal. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, and they're fanatical like sports fans can be fanatical. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? You love yeah. the Jets. Yeah. 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 You love the Jets. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They yeah. don't always make it, but you know. And so I think that's team. yeah, and I think that's a big part of it. I think, uh, and you know, with all due respect to all the other shows, I think we have the best show. The pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the we have like yeah. fantastic uh, writers and <coughs> producers, directors, yeah. Chuck actors, Pratt, all Jill across Fowles. the board. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, you put a quality. I think. You put on a quality program and it's going to find an audience. Yeah. Yep. And the acting is good. It is. Oh, the acting is so yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And talk about the preparation for that because you guys have, you know, ripped through so many episodes. Know. You know, how do you I don't know. How, what, what, what do you think it is? Because I got to tell you, if I'm in the grocery store and I got to bring a shopping list, I will forget yeah. <laughs> half of the stuff yeah, right? on there. You know, I'll leave it in the car. But when it comes time to work, I maybe it's because we're getting paid. have been doing what it for what, so what long, you, too, I, I think. I, yeah. I think this is. I don't know if this is in for you guys. To me, I think it's like, I always say it's like gorilla TV. Right, we don't we don't have yeah. time to like overthink it, and and it just kind yeah. of like you look at you look at the scene. <clears throat> uh, for me, I can pretty quickly like figure out what is my intent in the scene, where, how is this furthering the story, and how does it fit into the bigger story that we're telling within like this episode or whatever, and then you you know then you do it, and so I think uh, unlike some other work that we've done where if you're working on stage or in a film, there's a lot of time to really sort of. Uh, flush it out. Flush it out, and, and, <coughs> and here it's like... You don't really get that. No. What was the yeah. question? How do we start on this? I, I don't well, know, but just it's not the, 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 the preparation. preparation. Yeah. So I think With it's, all the it's, material. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like yeah. trusting your uh, your initial instincts, yeah. which are mm -hmm. mostly correct, 90%. right? Mm -hmm. And then if they're not, you'll, you will we'll have someone tell us that we're, off. we're off the mark, <laughs> and then we'll do it again. But like, I think, again, I think we're all good actors, and we have good instincts, and I think that helps to to sort of be able to yeah. get it right the first time. And yeah. also we work so much we're, and a lot of us are playing characters that, you know like we've, he's been on for 13 years 11 years you've been doing soaps for almost 20 years you, you, mm -hmm. you do these characters you live out these storylines that are like he said somewhat a part of your life yeah. you know multiple days out of every week of your life so a lot of the dialogue has to do with something you just live through on in scenes you know yeah. a couple days before true. it's yeah. like mm -hmm. recalling a couple days in your real life ago right. you could do that a little easier you know yeah. when you when you you're actually 
doing it at that pace and that mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. You're right. So that helps too. Yeah, that well said. Sense. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no daily table reads, we'll assume then. Heck no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> in the makeup room, maybe you, know, you get a shot. Tell them a little <laughs> bit about like a day of like a schedule. Room. The first Shooting thing day. is at 6.45, you sit in the makeup chair or a hair chair. I don't know, would you guys sit very 7 long? 7.15. <laughs> <It's seven laughs> See, I got to be at 6.45 because <laughs> I need an extra half hour. But you sit, you get your hair, you get your makeup done, and you're waking up. And everyone else around you is sort of waking up, too. And mm. you have your coffee, you have your breakfast, you run your lines, and you get to blocking. And uh, then we sort of get to meet each other for the first time of the day at blocking, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And we say hello and, and all that good stuff. And then we start saying the lines and we find out sort of what's fitting and what's not fitting. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, I think and so. And then uh, see what the director wants. Then go back, finish, get ready. 8.30, wheels up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time to go. Average about 50 scenes a day. Yeah, 50 scenes a day. Wow. Yeah. And uh, rock and roll. A day. <laughs> so we'll start at 8.35, and we won't wrap until about 5, 5.30. 5 30, just six wow. and, and I'll tell you who are the heroes, our stage managers. Oh, yeah. mm. Those yeah. are the guys that keep us all on track, okay, and keep those scenes moving and go to the next set and go to the next set. Um, it's kind of awesome. Mm. I find myself in awe sometimes watching the whole process, and I just kind of go, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> it's just one big machine that yeah. just doesn't really mm-hmm. stop, and yeah. it can't stop for much. Yeah. You know, even if you go up on a line all of us are very like okay let's do it again come on because we got to keep up this yeah. crazy one pace. take of rehearsal and then the next right. take we shoot and wow. then move on and move on and you hope you don't have to do <laughs> yeah. more than two takes yeah. right and yeah. sometimes they ask you you want to go straight to tape no I, rehearsal so yeah yeah that happens sometimes especially towards the end of the day oh yeah when they're trying go. to rush in to get yeah. done in time <laughs> yeah. wow. which so we do so sometimes pressure, pressure all and the then time. also yeah. and, and i think uh i sort of thrive on that i, I do love too. the oh yeah like i was never a uh get a term paper in school done like a month before it was due. Yeah. I, was <laughs> the guy, before. I was the guy who was up until like all night getting it done. So, <laughs> adrenaline. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so yeah. Uh, the adrenaline's fun for me. There is a thing with yeah. an adrenaline that is in that machine of a soap opera. It's addictive. I've, I've said this before with mm-hmm. other friends that we start to kind of just draw on it a bit. Um, you begin to um, crave it. Because mm-hmm. I do at least um, mm-hmm. in your acting because there's so much it's so alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm sure yeah. you feel mm-hmm. that way too. Yeah. Yeah. A live show. Yeah. You know, but um, I love it. Yeah. Well, they say um, soap opera acting is the best training for any style of acting. You can do anything. Once you can do, of course, you can do yeah. that, you can do anything. Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Literally. I believe that. 100%. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's stage absolutely. is right there along with yeah. it as well. Yeah. I do believe that. Yeah. And yeah. I think they're yeah. very similar, too. They are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I, thought, I didn't want no, to cut you no, off. No, I didn't I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm talking so much. I'm sorry. I'm like, what else do we want to dive into? Well, I did want to talk about, like, since you guys are, are very specific with your roles, is there another character that you would enjoy playing on the show besides yourself, or besides your own character? Yes. Who And who would it be? Adam. And why. Uh-huh. And why, yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, he always wins his arguments. He's always winning in the arguments. But um, he's just the cutest. He's so handsome, Justin. He's so talented. But I like it because he's got a little bit of good and a, a lot of bad. Mm-hmm. But um, I love that he's the Newman, sort of the black sheep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gets to have a sense of humor, which I think is really, he, Justin has a beautiful sense of humor, so he really adds that to his role. But I like that. I like he, I think he's written for very well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. But I love Phyllis. I, l- I love my Phyllis. <laughs> she's kind of equivalent to his. She's like, she's the, the, I would, yeah. that's a compliment. That's a big compliment because I, I think he's great. I'm but still thinking. Do you have an answer, Brian? Yeah. Uh, not really. I really like my Kevin. character. <laughs> 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 no pressure. No pressure. No. Nobody. I really like my character. I think um, um, uh, Christian's character is interesting to play uh, Michael Baldwin because he's yeah. the, the, the neighborhood attorney for everyone. So mm-hmm. he has to find, you know, a justification or reason to, you know, either defend or prosecute just about everyone in town who he's had some kind of relationship with at some point, whether it be a friend or, you know, whatever. Uh, so just the fact that he gets to interact and really get into story. I mean, he, he was the one who who had my adoption papers, you know, made and signed when I, <laughs> years ago on the show, and then he defended me when I was on trial for murder, and then, you know, he's, he's defending Adam, he's guy. doing, you know, he just, he has to get involved with everyone in such yeah. a deep way that it's, that'd be a cool character to be. He's amazing. A lot of dialogue. You're still thinking, yeah, Greg? You're still thinking. I think I, I Greg's like, I have the perfect yeah. character. I don't I need to play like, anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> I'm, um, I, maybe Adam. Adam's a fun character, too. Yeah. But, um, God, I love playing Kevin. <laughs> so. Are you able to tell us you have a new job coming up, right? Oh, on yeah. TNT? What, yeah, what are you I, playing there? Um, I, I uh, 
did four episodes of a show called Major Crimes, uh, mm-hmm. which comes back from their uh, hiatus on November, Monday, November 2nd. And I play a defense attorney who specializes in um, death penalty cases. And I'm an anti-death penalty advocate, so I'm representing uh, someone who could potentially um, be sentenced to death. And, and mm-hmm. uh, my character has very strong convictions about right and wrong and um, is really against the death penalty so it's really uh, uh, um, compared to playing someone like Kevin who has um, a lot of moral ambiguity to him (laughs) (laughs) playing someone with such a clear (coughs) sense of right and wrong was uh, really fun and he's so he's a really passionate guy uh, character's name is Bobby Monroe. So yeah, it was great. Lots of fun. Beautiful. That's cool. Is there any type of role outside of YNR that you guys would be dying to play? Mm. I know there's shows that I, you know that are fantastic now. I mean, you, we have um, I love Scandal. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. all that. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, awesome. Uh, what about you? Do you um, favorite shows or roles? Uh, I it's not on anymore, but I was um, I think like in recent memory, the role of Dexter. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that was a great. You'd show be a though. great Dexter. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Same thing though. He's sort of like uh, you know he sort of created his own like rules, but had a mm-hmm. clear yeah. sense of what was right and what mm-hmm. was wrong. Um, and Michael C. Hall is such a great actor. He's so mm-hmm. great in that role. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Uh, no, that's the one that came to my mind mm-hmm. first. Yeah, no, no particular role. It's hard for, I mean, as an actor, I think you just want to do something that's going to challenge you the most. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think any kind of character that you'd have to create from the ground up would be something that would be a lot of fun to play, something where you get to... to to create their mannerisms, their characteristics, and their mm-hmm. the way they speak, the way they mm-hmm. walk, talk, everything, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, we're, and s- especially when it's something that's drastically different from who you are. The more of that, the, I think, the better the role. Mm-hmm. And then obviously for YNR, there's the writers are amazing, but if you guys could have the pen one day and they said, you have the, <laughs> you could write the future for your storyline, what would you uh. write as your storyline? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot. Of pressure. <laughs> we were trying to come up with some good ones and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think oh I would boy. want Kevin to like, you know, uh, you know, bend the rules a little bit to yeah. to get forward, and then uh, have his comeuppance in some way that you know, sort of basically like what already happens to him. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing Kevin become a dad and see how yeah. he would, uh, yeah. how he'd handle. That's right, he's not a dad. He's not a dad and also <coughs> had like a really troubled childhood, so it'd be interesting to see um, the challenge of him um, not wanting to put any of that on his kid. Yeah. And, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that's something I haven't done yet that I think would be really fun. Mm-hmm. I think um, I've always been a big fan of characters, what happens to a character when they lose something that they care about. Um, and then when they have that position in life when they have nothing to lose. So in other words, when they're at ground zero yeah. Yeah. and they're raw and it doesn't matter anymore and all the rules are over. Um, Phyllis has sort of built her life back up from mm-hmm. a challenged childhood and um, a, a rocky past. She's in a good place now financially in her marriage within the community. Um, in a way, I'd like to see maybe some of that challenge so we can see her unravel a bit. Mm-hmm. I would try that. A little that. unraveling. Yeah, like that. I like She's the raw. Unraveling. Unraveling. I like the raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's a lot more fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Do you know about how we hid and moved a dead body together a no. few years ago? That was, that, no. And that, that was her a little bit unraveling. Right? Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, wrapped him up in a, in a full on wrapped him up in a rug, yeah. tossed him in the back of the car. And <laughs> we uh, whose him. body? We didn't we kill him. Know. It was uh, your shrink who okay. was blackmailing you. Oh, oh right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Named Dr. Tim, is that That's right? Awesome. Yeah. Think, and, mm-hmm. uh, this is and when Michelle Stafford played yeah. Phyllis. And so you were going to pretend to seduce him and then you were going to drug him and make him think that you had Given him, given into his demands, which were sexual. Oh, <laughs> spicy! <Aren't they> always? <laughs> but then, before you had the oppor- but before you had the opportunity to to drug him, I think he had a heart attack and died. Is that right? Yeah, I think. So. Yeah. I think oh. so. Yeah. Awesome. And then, like, bumbling yeah, Kevin comes and knocks on the door. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Hi. And you're like, okay, now you gotta help me yeah, exactly. hide the body. Yeah. But your reaction was so <laughs> cute. I remember. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Let, yes, let's have more let's of that. Have, let's have another Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and Brian, Brian yeah. what would you do? Oh, to my character? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll still a little bit of what Greg said. Um, I've always wanted to see Devon uh, um, adopt mm. a kid because he came from 
that life he was adopted and mm. and and had such a an hard childhood growing up um and especially to be in the position he is now with so much money just to have him experience what it would be like to go through the challenges uh, depending on what age of the child it is he adopted you know to to really get a sense of what that kid needs and what money couldn't provide you know and have him deal with that maybe even as a as a as a single father um the way his you know he was raised by his single mother and then his grandmother um just to go through that challenge just in reverse you know yeah. and just experience it in a whole new light and you know see what he gets that's from cool. that. What yeah. if Kevin and Devon adopted a kid together? I, oh. That's a very good idea. Yeah. And then Kevin gets half Devon's cool. money mm -hmm. because... <laughs> there you go. The yeah, that's where it goes. <laughs> he has a lot to share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so this is kind of a standard question we have for you guys, but since you're all three Emmy winners, <laughs> where oh. right now is your Emmy stored at? Oh my goodness, probably, I, honestly, my husband and I are moving. We're in the process of getting one apartment squared away. We're combining. Yes, this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's in an office and it'll soon be in a box. <laughs> 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 so I can get it moving. But yes, it's always in a place that reminds me um, of good things. Sweet. Yeah. Um, mine is currently on the mantle in my living room, but we're actually uh, doing some work in our house and uh, I'm building an office downstairs, so it'll move into my office. <clears throat> And mine's uh, in my mom's room. I gave it to my mom. Oh, yeah. wow. that's sweet. <laughs> How was that moment for all of you guys winning? Awesome. Like otherworldly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. From the second they say your name, um, it's like a... Uh, out of body experience. It's out of body, yeah, yeah, it really is. It's such a compliment it's because an, it's yeah. our community uh, putting a stamp of approval, I guess. Maybe that's not the right word, but it's a way of your community saying, you know what, that was amazing. You're doing all right. Yeah. 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 And, and it does matter. It yeah. does matter. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also mm -hmm. all have great things going on in your personal life. You recently got married. I got married. Yeah. And how has married life <laughs> changed your world? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, we, uh, my husband Rob and I have been together for 10 years, so we were like kind of married already. Yeah. And, uh, and I didn't think it would, um, I mean, the day-to-day -day isn't really any different. I don't, you know, our relationship doesn't feel we were committed before, we're committed now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun saying my husband. I like yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. very cool. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then philanthropy. Philanthropy is yes. something yes. That you're heavily involved in. Yes. And give us a little bit more. Soul Nine. Actually, yeah, that. Yeah, was here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a, a shameless plug. I um, love this. A few They're years so ago. so cute, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I started a shoe company with the help of my father and my brother and my uncle, and <clears throat> I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to start something that mattered. And for uh, when we sell shoes, a portion of our proceeds go to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. It's amazing. My mm -hmm. fa which is an amazing uh, uh, coalition. These shoes are special because my father helped me put them together. He manufactured them for me, and we did this together as a family, and we wow. picked out the leathers, and we picked out every component of the shoe, and so I learned that side of it, how to manufacture shoes. And on the other spiritual side, it was something that mattered to me. Inside all of our designs, uh, we have high vibration words. Oh, wow. And these were goodness, kindness, peace, love, joy, all empowering <laughs> words, because we believe that life can be lived from the inside out, and when you walk walk in love, you can change your life. Mm -hmm. And so it was about combining that message with a product and helping women at the same time. And so I do this, this is my hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the show, I'm very busy, but at the same time, we sell Soul Nine online and to distributors across the country. And we try to get our name out there. And so, um, you know, I'm proud of it. It's yeah. something I really love. And I don't think I mean, this is my right. size. So will, <laughs> will, there be, will there be any men's sizes in the future, maybe? You know, <laughs> yes. Men line going on there? And I love the little studs or little the hearts. Or, yes. Yeah. And I did all of those with sketches. It just started really? one day. Yeah. Yes. And that's how inspiration that's works, you know? That's really cool. and so, in a way, it was something that started from here and in my heart and came out. And so I felt, you know, very proud of it. Mm -hmm. So go to soulnine.com, yeah. everybody. My mom and sister are getting some yeah. Oh, good. That's good. I'll hook them up. That's awesome. And awesome Brighton, you also started your own foundation, too, right? Oh, the years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, in 96, um, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving, the youth division, though, um, which is still yeah extremely active. We partnered with uh, the National Organization of Youth Safety, NOISE, oh. and um, we continue to do events and... and, and um, you know, speak to kids and travel around the country, you know, year round, uh, promoting safe, safe choices, safety messages, um, uh, a lot of um, alcohol and, and, and car related, you know, messages yeah. about not getting in a car with someone who's been drinking, seatbelt, texting and driving, things like that. 
um, yeah, that's 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 been going for quite some time now. Yeah, yeah that's huge. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And you've all had such a great career up to date, and I'm sure many more years to come. But if you could use one word to define your career to date, what would it be? Lucky. One word. One word. Mm. Blessed. Blessed. <laughs> Lucky, I guess. <laughs> Two luckies and one blast. Yeah. I like that. We are a grateful bunch. <laughs> a grateful sure. bunch. We are a grateful bunch. I'm sure there's so many lessons and things that you've learned along the way. Is there any like advice that you'd give to other people wanting to, you know, be actors or just in general pursuing their dreams that you know you want to say? Patience is yeah. like is key. <coughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, um, you know, it is not fun struggling, mm-hmm. uh, but you know. If it's if if you have a dream and it, you know anything that's worth uh, hard work and effort, you know shouldn't be shouldn't come easy. It should be something yeah. that is going to require right. some like pounding of the pavement that's and right. you know double mm-hmm. shifts at restaurants or mm-hmm. swollen feet after fourteen hours stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's no there's no single path. I would, that's the first bit of advice I'll I'll say to people. I'll tell you my story. Right. But there's no like roadmap to right. follow. Yeah. It's yeah. Sort of like everyone's own journey. Know, yeah. 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 Um, so I guess patience is, uh, is, is key. Yeah, patience mm-hmm. and keep that heart open, keep that communication open, and and stay in love with the business. Stay, you know, it's hard to stay in love with the business because you can fall out of love with it from time to time if you're working or not working. But stay in love with the act of communicating, um, being that person that gets to tell the story because you will be that person when you're hired to tell the story, mm-hmm. um, and and <coughs> stick in there with it. And you know, keep the hope. Yeah, and I tell anyone that um, that to always, never forget that they're in control of their own happiness, no matter what, and not to put your happiness mm. in, you know, a job, because it's there's it, you know, being in the entertainment business is no different than having a job doing anything else. At the end of the day, you're just lucky enough to do it, and a lot of people get to enjoy it and be creative, you know, in it. And I've seen a lot of people and grew up a lot of, with a lot of people who put all their happiness in having a job or being, so you know, true, famous yeah. or being, you know, just working. And when, when stuff doesn't happen, then they're not happy. Right. They don't yeah. know right. who they are anymore yeah. or whatever. That's and right. So yeah. um, that's what I would, the be, best advice would be that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. And then we have a fun little awesome. wordplay yeah. game. Awesome. I think. <laughs> sure. So word so play. how this is going to work out is that I give you the, the word, mm-hmm. we'll go back and forth, so bad and you guys just tell us the first word that comes to mind when we oh, say this name. Oh, man. Okay. All right, so <laughs> you, you start, JJ, and I'll, I'll give this a second. Are we okay. going to row? Yeah, yeah each, okay. we want to hear what each one of you oh, have okay, to say okay. first. Okay. First word. Right. Okay. Go this way? Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you guys choose. Right. Whoever is a good Okay, but then we'll come back this way. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll, sure. yeah we'll, we'll come back. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter for me. I'm right in the middle. Of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hope this is easy. Okay. Okay. All right. Eric Braden. One word? Yeah. We'll let you have two if you need to. Uh, three tops. Or three. <laughs> Epic. Ah. <laughs> uh, German. <laughs> 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 Tough. I thought someone would say mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Oh. Beautiful. Stunning. Brave. Mm. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. He j- unedited. Uh, kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shonda Rhimes. Um, smart. Bright. Powerful. You guys all passed. That was Pamela. Yeah. Yeah, that was Pamela. <laughs> You're all passed, Dave. Eh? Now passed. an easier question, <laughs> yes. too. Are you guys dressing up for Halloween? And if so, what are you going to be? Oh, no, I'm not. I don't, I, I, but let me tell you. But beyond the show, I think I got it out of my system. <laughs> Eight episodes in the best outfit. Uh, no, husband and I are probably just going to enjoy the weekend and uh, see friends. Uh, I'm going up to Lake Arrowhead with some friends. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, um, Are you going to no, dress up? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love Halloween. Okay. And I, I, it's yeah. awesome, it's, uh, yeah. It sure didn't work out this year, but we get yeah. we get really into Halloween, which is not this yeah. year. My girlfriend and I are going to take um, uh, Crystal's son, uh, Caden, uh, trick-or-treating. Sweet. Oh, and uh, I think I'm going to be Batman. Oh, nice. Oh, like a Batman nice. beanie mask, because he wanted me to be, he's going to be Iron Man. And, yeah. Where are you going nice. to yeah. Around the neighborhood, around like... Nice. Yeah. Luca Lake is nice. also pretty. Is yeah. it good for this? Yeah, there's um, like just south of Riverside, uh-huh. there's uh, a couple of streets that really like. Go really, there's a couple of houses over there that yeah, have like haunted good. houses that for the neighborhood. Really I can imagine yeah. California in general, LA yeah. is yeah. off the hook. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that about wraps us up here today. Amazing. Um, so questions. everybody starting on Friday. This is a little, I don't know if you can see it in here. I'll just hold it up there. Zoom I don't know if they can mm-hmm. zoom in. But <laughs> anyway, everybody's in costume on there. You can see their fabulous Halloween costumes. The gala begins. And so tune in. There's going to be some epic stuff going oh, yeah. on. Awesome. Where can everybody follow you guys at one more time? Um, at, social. Uh, uh, at Brighton E. James on Twitter. Yes, yeah. on Twitter at Gina Tonioni, Facebook as well. Um, on Instagram and Twitter at Greg Ricard. Yeah. You can find me at Dario Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and on our sister brother network, <laughs> Black Hollywood Live. <laughs> and awesome. I'm at JJ Jurgens on Twitter, Jurgens JJ on Instagram, and at TomGirl.tv. So thank you guys so much so for much coming fun. today. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much questions. for having us. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody tune into YNR. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 